darling, you're beautiful, gotta keep your head up, never let anything bring you down, sunshine will always come around, stay strong, move on, you have such a beautiful soul, let your energy radiate. Hi everyone, welcome to your midweek yoga chakra series. We are number three out of seven and we are dedicating this practice to the chakra system, specifically the Manipura chakra, which is also known as the solar plexus chakra. It's located at the navel area. It sits just below about two inches from the belly button all the way up to that little hollow area right at the um, bottom of the rib cage. And of course, in front of the upper lumbar and lower thoracic spine. So it really encompasses a large part of our trunk and abdominal area. So starting on our backs tonight, we wanna be able to bring our feet to the outer edge of the bottom of the mat and maybe the toes just splay open placing your right hand right at the navel, and then taking your left hand and placing that right at that hollow area that we just spoke of at the lower rib cage. And just settle in there, maybe allowing the eyes to close lightly. See if you can purposely press the lower part of your back into your mat, maybe even tilting the pelvis up a little like we learned to do last week, engaging that area and then slowly releasing and seeing if you can keep the connection of the lower back to the mat. And as you breathe in, filling that space from the right hand all the way to the left hand, perhaps filling from the right pinky all the way to the left thumb. And then as you exhale from the left thumb to the right pinky. A couple of times doing this and maybe starting to feel a little pressure of the right hand on the exhale, really allowing that belly to draw towards the backbone so that we can release and press out all of the air. And then maybe start to imagine filling up that area from that lumbar lower back area just to the middle back area. Feeling that press of the spine on the inhale as we inflate the diaphragm and on the exhale as we press the diaphragm up, releasing all of the air and maybe even taking some breaths from the right side of the lower rib cage to the left side of the lower rib cage, feeling that inhalation at the top and seeing if you can also imagine filling up from the right waist to the left waist. So really having a 360 feeling of air passing through and moving through that chakra Again, imagining that there's almost a gyroscope in that area of energy that is filling up like a balloon and then not only releasing, but actively pressing out the air on the exhale. I'm gonna go about eight to 10 rounds here as I tell you a little bit about your Manipura chakra. In Sanskrit, that actually means jewel of the chakras. So that is where it's believed to be the seat of the body's Agni or energy source that affects the whole body because that's where all in Sanskrit, Manipura means jewel of the chakras. It is considered the seat of the body's Agni or energy force. Um, it is In Sanskrit, Manipura means jewel of the chakras. It's considered the seat of the Agni or fire energy of the body. 
it is the place where all of our central nervous system converges and then spreads out through the body. So the home of the sympathetic nervous system and that radiating outward into the body allows us to In Sanskrit, Manipura means jewel of the chakras. It is considered the seat of the body's agni or fire or energy source. It affects the central nervous system. That's where all of the nerves converge and then branch out all the parts of the body. It's also the home of the sympathetic nervous system and it affects your will or your willpower. It's the source of ego and sense of self. It's the area of emotion, and it offers us wisdom to find harmony and confidence. It affects the digestive system, the adrenal glands, as well as the parasympathetic nervous system of the body. So if you will now just settle into a natural breath, Maybe bring your hands to the sides of the body. Maybe just breathing in lightly through the nose, exhaling also through the nose. Now imagine the color yellow associated with this chakra. It contains a 10 petal lotus flower. And the symbol for this chakra is a red triangle. The element associated with the Manipura chakra is fire. Its quality is active and is attributed to wisdom, self-confidence, strength, and your well-being. We're gonna take a nice inhale, maybe reaching the hands above the heads, pointing the toes straight out to the bottom of the mat. Nice full body stretch. Maybe on the exhale, a little yawn or sigh, some kind of sound. And if you need to take another nice inhale, exhale, please do so before we start to draw our knees to our chest. And just hugging in those shins. Maybe a little bit of rocking back and forth. Before we bring the arms out into a T or a diagonal up towards the top of the mat or even gold post arms. We're gonna let those knees drop to the left side Maybe taking that left hand, just gently bringing the right knees over a little bit. Not too deep of a stretch at first. We want to take a nice inhale as we look up towards the ceiling. And on the exhale, maybe the glance just comes over the right hand for our recline twist. And as we inhale, start to imagine that right hip has a diagonal line crossing over the body to the right armpit. We're actually on opposite sides here as those two points draw away from each other on the inhale. And on the exhale, seeing if we can keep that length between the two points. If we want, we can cross our right foot underneath our left knee. We can bring our toes up towards our shins for a little bit more activity just really breathing in, opening up that right side body, just starting to rinse out some of the toxins accumulated throughout the day. And seeing if we can get some nice stretch in the arms. So if that's all the way to the right, out in the T, great. If it's up at that diagonal, just be careful not to overstretch the shoulder. And if you're in goddess pose, you just, just try to really make that connection between that whole top side of the arm to the floor, almost pressing in with the tips of the fingers or the back of the hand. And maybe even actively engaging on the exhale, that belly button towards the spine again. On the inhale, the knees are gonna rise up. We're gonna just give ourselves a nice little hug before we let them drop over towards the right side. Again, you can choose to cross over 
we're just actively engaged the toes drawing up towards the shins taking that right hand again just gently laying it over that left knee giving a little bit of leverage to your twist as we reach out that right hand again either towards a t or gold post arms looking up towards the ceiling inhaling and exhaling as we gaze over towards the left side just feeling that twist again from the left hip now all the way to the left armpit imagining that there was an, a diagonal line there and those two points can pull that line a little bit longer on the exhale i notice on this side i'm just a little bit stiffer a little bit tighter today just really breathing in through the nose exhaling through the mouth and really feeling that belly button drawing in towards the spine on the exhale is allowing me just to get a little bit softer in the belly just allowing a little bit more of the toxins to rinse out feel free to move your arm find what's comfortable sometimes what works on the one side isn't always what works on the other side just finding your own sense of purpose and through each of the transitions in your asana tonight just touch back with that inheritance that true self the power within maybe allowing the ego to just take a break for the next 45 minutes and listening to our inner wisdom in the next inhale the knees are going to rise up we're just going to take a couple of more rocks back and forth feel free to happy baby just to get a little bit more movement maybe in the hip flexors as the feet start to rise on the inhale towards the ceiling actively engaging toes are going to be drawing towards the shins or towards the nose towards the face taking flat palms to the sides getting a nice press there of the lower spine and on the exhale we're just going to come down about 30 degrees hold it there for a breath and then on the inhale bring them back up and on the exhale again 30 degrees really actively drawing that belly towards the ground making sure that there's no little tunnels or open spaces at the lower back inhaling bringing the feet up again I don't want to do the same thing with the neck. We don't want to really be craning or jutting the chin out. So maybe just drawing the chin in lightly as we exhale again for the next 30 degrees. Nice breath in. And on the inhale, coming back up to the top. This time we're going to exhale and bring it to about 60 degrees, whatever that means to you. Just feel it in your body. Holding for a breath. Inhaling, legs rise up. Exhale, really trying to keep that belly engaged, holding that nice, strong core. As we inhale, bring them back up. Sometimes you can even grab the sides of your mat as we go for the last 60 degrees. Nice breath here, checking in with the shoulders, making sure we're not crunching anything up. Maybe wiggling out the jaw, opening and closing the eyes. As we come down now for almost a 90 degree, so we wanna just like hover there about an inch or so off the floor, toes are engaged. Nice breath in. On the exhale, really pressing that navel towards the tailbone and on the inhale, rising up. We're gonna do that two more times at your own pace. And if you really wanna challenge, arms can rise up over the head as you take the legs down for those breaths. This is a little bit harder to keep that lower back on the floor, but work with it. Just try not to tighten up anything in the process. All right, I think we took an extra one there. That's all good. We're gonna take the knees back down, another little rock side to side, and then start to take that rock along the tailbone just holding the backs of the knees getting a little bit of momentum here crossing legs 
and coming right up into table. Scooch back. Just taking some cat cows here and however that feels right for you. I'm just gonna do some hip circles first. Loosen out that belly that just worked so hard for me in my leg lifts. Curling the toes under, inhaling, allowing the belly to drop. The gaze comes up towards the top corner of the ceiling. Nice stretch, maybe the shoulders reach towards the hip. And on the exhale, shoulders reach towards the hips in the opposite direction. So the tailbone is arching up for cat. And on the inhale, dropping down for cow. Exhale. Inhale. And just really feeling the head drop, the shoulders drop, hips drop on that cat. And just taking whatever movements that are calling to you that you need for today. I'm just gonna talk about some crystals that may help to have around when we're feeling some imbalances in the solar plexus chakra. So of course, we're gonna go with any of the yellow stones, which yellow, of course, is the color as for mentioned for this chakra. So that could be anything from citrine to amber, tiger's eye as well. There's rutile quartz and rose quartz. Um, that's also good for this area kind of gives us a little self-love. And then of course, snowflake obsidian, protecting that area. Turquoise and ruby zoocyte. And of course that beautiful Herkimer diamond that just amplifies all the good stuff happening. All right, coming into child's pose. Now I want you to take that left hand and see if you can just thread it under the right so you might even be able to see right under that armpit. Maybe tent the fingers as if you had like something special in a little bird cage under the right hand. So we're getting a little twist on this side, really opening up this right side body all the way from the right hip to the right middle finger. Just settle in for a couple of breaths here. And I will go over some of the essential oils that are really wonderful to use to open up this chakra. So anything that's sweet and spicy. So think about cassia, patchouli, fennel, basil, uh, juniper, and actually peppermint or frankincense and myrrh. And I'm bringing that right hand to the face and pressing up. Just a little cat cow here right before we sink into our child's pose and thread the needle on the other side. And I'm gonna turn this way so that we can just talk a little bit more about those oils, even combining peppermint and something like a carrier oil, like coconut oil or almond oil. We can rub that on the belly if we're having any little discomfort. Circular motions from right to left really helps aid in the digestion process. And if you're having trouble getting things moving down there, any twists like this or the recline twist that we did are wonderful ways of just getting the energy, getting the fire moving down there. A couple more breaths as we press into the right back of the hand, really breathing in, opening up, tailbone drawing towards the heels, crown of the head drawing up towards the top of the mat, really feel that breath coming down the tailbone, but more importantly, that whole left rib cage. On the exhale, always drawing the navel towards the spine for a little banda engagement. Inhale, I'm gonna press back up. Again, take another cat cow if you so desire. And we're gonna move right into downward facing dog. Taking the right foot, we're gonna bring it behind the left leg. The knees are just gonna kind of nestle in together. We're gonna look under that right armpit, bringing the belly up towards the spine again, and just feeling a nice little stretch. Another little twist or semi-twist, opening up that right side body. And when you're ready, coming back to down dog, crossing the left over the right, maybe looking under the left armpit. 
And now we're getting the legs involved with the twists, right? Getting the arms to support us. Allowing the hips really twist here. One more time on each side. And then just settling into a down dog for a few breaths. Again, allowing that belly to really parachute up by drawing the navel towards the spine, engaging your banda, supporting your stance. And the hips are allowing that belly to rise, really bringing that torso up towards the top of your little triangle. On the exhale, the hands are going to walk back towards the feet. So we're in a little bit of a forward fold here. You can open up the legs. Really enjoy it if you need to grab onto the backs of the legs, drawing the crown towards the earth. Or you can do elbow to elbow and just really take a nice soft bent knee, ragdoll it out. Just giving the belly a little break, letting it lean on the thighs for a moment. Opening up that whole back body, feeling the stretch from the tailbone as it comes all the way down to the crown, from the crown to the earth. On our inhales, we're gonna do something a little different for our halfway lift. So we're gonna inhale halfway, but the hands are gonna come back. Palms are gonna be up towards the sky and really engage, you know, feel the muscles in your biceps and triceps. Fingers can be really active here. Belly's gonna draw up. And we're gonna bend into that left knee and take the right leg behind the left like we did in our down dog. That's gonna be an inhale. Exhale, we're gonna fold forward and on the next inhale, we're gonna do another half lift. So it's a little curtsy. The gaze can either be straight in front of you or just a little bit towards that top of your mat. Again, the exhale is a forward fold. In the forward fold, we're gonna just do a little twist on the Sari Namaskara B today. So inhaling, we're gonna bend the knees rising up through chair. So really taking it forward until you can't anymore and then we come up with the hands. Maybe a little Tadasana pose for a moment to set any intentions for your solar plexus perhaps. When you're ready, beginning the sun salutations, inhaling to rise, exhale coming back to forward fold through chair walking the hands out for our vinyasa into plank. Knees come down, toes flatten as we slowly lower, bending our elbows towards the back body, sliding forward, low cobra. So we're gonna take a couple of inhale and exhales here, just working again, the abdominal area. So if you're more comfortable with spreading out the arms a little, coming up on the fingertips, that's a great way to start. On the inhale, just pressing up, but really lifting through the belly. The tailbone should be drawing back towards the heels. The glutes should not be super squeezed at this point. It's really an ab workout on the inhale. And on the exhale, we're just gonna wave it down. Inhale, chin comes to the chest as we start to slowly lift. Maybe then the gaze comes up. And on the exhale, releasing down. A couple of times here on your own, inhaling, exhaling, really working those abs with the help of the fingertips. And again, if you're more comfortable with your traditional cobra where the hands are close to the rib cage, as long as those elbows are drawing towards the back, you're doing great. On the next exhale, we're gonna rise up into downward dog. Walking the hands back towards the feet, taking a quick forward fold before we inhale for that curtsy. Engaging the abs, exhale, forward fold, inhale, halfway lifting, nice little curtsy. Exhale, forward fold, rising up through chair to Urdhva Hastasana. Let's exhale, coming back through chair, forward fold. Walking the hands out for your vinyasa. Again, I recommend knees, chest, chin, so that you can really feel that nice inhale on the cobra. And then exhale, downward dog. Walking the hands back, forward fold. 
Inhale, halfway left, really drawing the belly towards the backbone for your curtsy. Exhale, let it rest. Inhale, bring it in. Exhale, let it rest. Inhale, drawing the arms up for chair. So we come to a stand in Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, coming back in the chair. So we can't go anymore, forward fold. Walking the hands out. Taking your vinyasa, hopefully through cobra so you can really enjoy that belly stretch. On the inhale, lift. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, coming up. Little back bend. Exhale, final one. Sitting through chair. Walking the hands out. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale for the back bend. Exhale, downward dog. Just catch your breath, stay here for a moment. Do any little wiggles, any little twists. Walk your dog and just settle in for a couple of breaths. Engaging the belly on the exhale. Seeing if you can keep that engagement throughout the breath here in down dog. Feeling that parachute belly up. Stepping into the left foot, we're gonna raise the right toes up towards the sky. Maybe a little pointed toe, or you can do a flexed pointed toe. So it kind of looks like your toes are spread and the ball of your foot is pushing out towards the wall behind you. And we're gonna exhale and bring knees to nose. Really raising the hips up on the exhale. Inhale it back. Exhale, nice ab work here. Inhale one more time. This time on the lift, we're gonna step forward on the exhale. So we're gonna just plant that left foot in and come right into warrior one pose. So again, that left toe is gonna to be pointing up somewhat to the front of the mat. We're gonna get that heel engaged, connecting to the mat behind you, bending into that right knee, reaching out in front till the arms raise for warrior one. Really drawing that tailbone down Getting nice stability, nice buoyancy in that right leg. Shoulders draw back, gazes up towards the top corner of the room. See if we can engage that belly a little bit more. And on the exhale, we're gonna come right into warrior three, right into Virabhadrasana three. So we're pressing off with the left foot. Maybe the hands come back as a counterbalance. The head is straight, the gaze is right down at the floor. Left toes are pointing straight down. Left heel is pressing towards the back of the mat as if you were standing on a wall. We're gonna take that left foot and we're gonna bring it to meet the right up at the front of the mat and sit down into chair. Hands are behind us. We're gonna bring them up and coming into Anjali Mudra prayer hands. Taking that left elbow, we're gonna bring it to the right knee, just to the outside. Pressing into the palms, fingertips maybe drawing also towards the right getting a nice lift of that right shoulder and right elbow up towards the sky. Maybe the gaze comes up to the right as well. Really sitting in there for your twist. Couple of breaths, feeling the engagement, feeling your gut, just breathing into it. And on the inhale, we're gonna come back, hands to prayer at the chest, we're gonna take that left foot, again, lift it up and just place it a couple of feet behind you. Hands can come to the mat as we halfway fold over that right leg. So the left toes are pointing towards the front of the mat. You're not on a balance beam, you're setting up for pyramid pose. Feet are parallel. Inhale, reaching the crown towards the front of the mat on the exhale, release. Let the crown drop towards the ground. Stretching out this right hamstring. 
maybe on the exhale, engaging that solar plexus banda, that area, that muscular area from the belly towards the spine. Really filling up your space, even when you're in a fold. Try to remember getting that breath down to the base of your Manipura chakra. Exhaling, releasing, engaging, just settling back. Taking the left palm, pressing it into the earth. If that's a little too far away from you, you can always take a prop, press that in to the left side. Nice elongation here. We always want those 90 degree angles happening. So get your setup. Maybe it's just a little bit in front of the right big toe off to the side, left side. I'm gonna take the right hand to the hip and start to rotate the chest towards the right. Elbows up towards the ceiling. And perhaps you can even peel open that right arm so that we're getting a nice long line from fingertip to fingertip. The gaze might even come up towards the right. And if you can engage that left ankle back towards the mat, great. If not, and you need to come up on the toes, that's fine too. Couple of breaths here, really feeling the connection of that right leg up to the right hip. We don't wanna hyperextend anything here with the knee. So if you need a little micro bend, just to take the pressure off, that's fine too. And when you're ready, exhale, move your prop over towards the side. You may need it for a little bit later when we switch sides. Both hands to the mat, take that right leg and bring it to the back of the mat. Left leg is just gonna come up for a nice stretch. Pointing the toes, exhaling, knee to nose. You're gonna go for it on the other side. Really lifting up those hips as the toe comes up, exhale. Knee to nose. And about your first fourth time, you're gonna take that left foot and bring it up between the front hands. So that right foot now is gonna pivot so that right heel is gonna to come to the ground. We're setting up for warrior one. So we wanna reach out over that bent knee to arrive at warrior one. So if you need to adjust anything in your hips here, that's fine. If you need to adjust anything in your feet, you want the hips to be forward, shoulders to be straight over the hips, pointing forward. A slight little arch in the back if you want. Reaching the chest up towards the sky and try to take that tailbone down towards the heel. Nice bend of the knee, getting some movement because we're about to enter into our warrior three. So pressing up, taking that right toe towards the ground, palms up, a little flying, stabilizing in that left foot, engaging the right glute by extending that right heel towards the back as if you're standing on a wall. Face is right, looking at the ground. We want to engage the belly. A couple of breaths here. And when you're ready, that right leg is going to come and meet the left. So we're going to stay in our little chair pose. As the hands come into Anjali Mudra prayer, this time we're going to take the right elbow, bring it over the left knee, pointing the fingers towards the left. Start to press into the palms. That's gonna allow you some space to open up for your twist. Maybe sit back a little bit further and just contemplate what's happening in the body. Where are you gripping? Is the breath steady? Is it smooth? Is it deep? Is it shallow? Really opening up the shoulders. On the exhale, drawing that belly towards the spine, 
emptying out the cavity to give you a little bit more space for your turn. When you're ready, we're gonna come back. We're gonna take that right foot up, peel it off, step it back, just a couple of feet. Straightening the left leg, hands come down to the mat. Nice inhale, drawing the crown forward before we exhale, folding over for pyramid. Again, feet are on railroad tracks. Releasing any tension in the head or the neck. Maybe shake the head no, nod the head yes. Props also come in handy here. If you have two blocks or just one, you can just lean into that. It also gives some nice space. If you want to come up halfway on the inhale and exhale, settle back in. Take that prop into the right hand if you need it. Pressing into that right palm. Starting to take the left hand to the left hip. Looking over towards the left side, allowing that whole torso to turn. Keeping that distance from the shoulder to the ear. Pressing into that right hand, allowing the turn, the twist. Engaging in that right ankle and heel. Maybe peeling up the arm for your twisted pyramid or triangle. And just leaning in, opening up the chest, making sure that that space between the right ear and the right shoulder is there. A nice soft gaze up towards the ceiling perhaps. Once again, checking in with the body, see what's happening. Can we bring the belly towards the back a little bit further? so We can get that little twist in the next exhale. Hand's gonna come down, we're gonna place that brick off to the side. Both hands are gonna plant on the mat. Left foot's gonna step all the way to the back. One's gonna come up to the sky just for a nice little stretch here. Bring the right foot down now. Walk the feet towards the center of the mat and walk the hands back to meet the feet. Gonna take that right foot, and bring it behind the left like we did in the beginning for our dog and for our little curtsies. This time really nestling in until we become seated with that left foot crossing over the right knee. And I'm just gonna face the front so you can see what's happening with that right foot. So maybe we take the right foot and we just kind of bring it behind us with the left hand. Taking both hands slightly behind our backs might give us an opportunity to inhale, reaching the chest up. And on the exhale, just a nice release. On the inhale, the right arm is gonna come up towards the sky. We're gonna take it onto the left knee or the left outer knee. We're gonna use that as leverage to exhale and you guessed it, twist. So that left hand is coming behind us. As we inhale, the crown of the head draws up towards the sky and the exhale, the gaze comes over the left shoulder. And some nice breaths in here. As we review some of the, the signs that we may have an imbalance in our solar plexus chakra or Manipura chakra, one of the signs might be ulcers, might be hypoglycemia or diabetes, a lack of confidence or even overconfidence could indicate that there's an imbalance, fear or aggression, or sometimes controlling behaviors. So the ego really uh, overriding what's happening in the emotional area of the body. When you're ready, we're just gonna switch sides. So the right foot is gonna come over the left thigh or knee, planting that right foot down. Maybe just using the right hand to get that left foot a little bit tucked under the right butt cheek. And again, just put the hands behind so you get a nice inhale, nice lengthening. So you know what that feels like. Nice exhale, releasing it all. 
On the inhale, bringing the left arm this time up towards the sky, we're gonna bring that over the right knee. Taking that right hand towards the back. Nice inhale, drawing the crown up, exhale, twisting it over that right shoulder. So again, just to give you a little show from this side, I like to get my right hand pretty close to my back. I tend to come up on my fingertips because that gives me a little bit more length. I'm a little bit short-waisted. Just get that nice twist. So some signs of blockage in the Manipura chakra could be a lack of energy or digestion issues, as we mentioned before. Even an enlarged belly or a sunken in belly can be a sign of blockage. And going back into those emotions again, senses of helplessness or negativity. And then of course there's adrenal fatigue or pancreatitis. When you're ready, we're gonna release and come into Vidrasana. So that's gonna be on your knees. And if that's uncomfortable for you, you can always sit on a block or if you're totally cool with just sitting back on your heels and just pressing the hands into the thighs again, making sure that we're really drawing up the crown towards the sky without scrunching the shoulders too much, just really pressing in there. Again, drawing the belly towards the backbone. We're gonna do what's called a breath of fire, also known as Kalabati breath. And I like to start by taking a nice deep inhale, long exhale. You can do that a couple of times. Restrictions for uh, a breath of fire would probably be if you are on your moon cycle or menstrual cycle, if you are carrying a little baby or human inside of you, uh, that might not be the best uh, breath or pranayama practice for you. So feel free to just sit and breathe deeply uh, through these next rounds. We're gonna take about three rounds of um, breath of fire. And we'll start by taking a nice long inhale and a really slow, smooth exhale. And then we're gonna just take a little short series of maybe 10 to 15 exhales through the nose. So the inhale is just gonna happen naturally, but the exhale is going to forcefully come out of the nose by contracting that belly in. So that bond the engagement, that drawing the belly in towards the backbone, but very sharply. So I could probably show you better by standing up. So that's gonna be a big inhale in. And on the exhale. Nice inhale. Again, exhales are gonna be that contracting of the belly. Inhale, filling up the belly. So just to enjoy that again in your dress and a pose. Take a nice inhale in and begin. Maybe bringing the hands up to the sky. Nice inhale, exhale. Maybe just cup the hands a little bit, catching some grace that may be falling upon you. Now you can always take this, these breaths with eyes closed. You can take some nice long inhale, exhales here at the end, just settling in. You may feel a little sense of lightheadedness, maybe just that warmth in the belly. When you're ready, we're gonna come into a seated wide leg position. Maybe just take your hands behind your backs again. 
reaching that chest up towards the sky, crown up towards the ceiling in a nice inhale. And on the exhale, we're gonna just turn towards that right leg. Inhale, straight, exhale, turn. Inhale, straight, exhale, turn. And when you're ready this time, arms are gonna rise up for the inhale. Exhale, turn and fold over that right leg. Toes are gonna come up towards the sky. We can have a little micro bend in our knee if we need it. And certainly if there's any props that are gonna help you get there or just feel supported, that's fine. And just feel that nice stretch from the left toes all the way up the shin, left thigh, up the left side body. If you can, maybe get that left arm involved to just reach a little bit forward. Maybe the right forearm comes down to the ground. Or not, it might even be just up here. It's even great to just have that pillow or bolster right here underneath your belly if you have one handy. And just folding over, keeping the toes engaged. Nice inhales. Exhales as we settled in. Taking just that one last forward fold and a twist. When you're ready, walking the hands back towards the body. Nice inhale again, maybe hands behind you. Exhale, turn towards the left this time. Inhale, rise. Exhale, turn. On the next inhale, the right arm is gonna come up. We're gonna turn on the exhale and just start to lower over that left leg. Nice deep breaths here. Again, maybe just getting a little micro bend in the knee. Toes are nice and active, pointing up towards the sky. Seeing if we can still activate that belly, at least on the exhales. And that might actually allow us to just dip a little bit forward. Noticing where there's any pinching or pulling or tightness. Seeing if you can imagine drawing your breath into that area. So maybe it's the left lower glute. Just that little exhale you give of drawing the belly towards the spine can just release a little bit of tension in those areas. Slowly, we're gonna walk the hands back towards the center body. Coming up with the help of the hands, drawing those knees together, extending the legs out now towards the bottom of the mat and getting set up for Shavasana in a moment. So you wanna put any socks on or get a little blanket or you need a little bolster or pillow for behind your knees when we lay down, you can start to prepare that. Otherwise, we're gonna take the hands out in front. We're gonna slowly, slowly lower, maybe to about that 60 degree angle. We're gonna bring the knees up and grab hold with our hands. So we're in a little bit of a V shape here, a little bit of a boat. Just finding that little balance on the sits bones at first, drawing the belly in, maybe lifting the chest, the chin raises slightly, toes are pointed down. We can take the hands now behind the knees and see if we can start to slowly lift our feet up towards the sky. Again, that's gonna need some drawing in of the belly just to get those legs up there. And if you don't need the help of your hands and you wanna just reach those out in front, nice strong pointed toes, belly activated for boat pose. You can also try raising the arms and just playing with the balance, seeing what works. If you're there or if you can get it up high, great. Touch, touch base with the face, make sure everything is loose 
and not feeling too stressed out or tense. When you're ready, we're gonna slowly start to release down to the ground. Take it slow. So now we're just gonna do a couple of bridge poses, a couple little back bends in order to exhale and raise the hips. Pressing the hands to the mat or again, grabbing the sides for a little leverage. We're gonna to start to exhale, pressing into the feet, pressing those knees forward as the hips raise for bridge. Chin is gonna draw down towards the chest. You can even try to wiggle your shoulders in a little bit. If you like to clasp hands underneath you, great. If you like to just have active hands, fingers pointing up towards the sky, getting those forearms really close to the rib cage as we press in, not forgetting to breathe. And on each exhale, maybe just pressing in a little bit more with the feet, allowing a nice back bend to happen here in bridge. If wheel pose is in your practice and you wanna go for that, great. Otherwise, we're just gonna stay here in bridge. Couple of more breaths. Really pressing in, filling the arch of the back drawing the tailbone towards the heels, trying to release the glutes, and just pressing up with that belly, nice full belly breaths, slowing it down. And if you're up in wheel, you're gonna come down, meet us here as we all lower our backs to the mat. Couple of breaths if you want to just windshield wiper the legs. Maybe take a nice arm stretch above just to open up that belly area. And then when you're ready, come into a position however you prefer with your arms. You're going to inhale, press up, bring those shoulders together, go into your wheel again. And just full belly breaths, really breathing in, filling up that whole abdominal area, getting a nice counter stretch here from all the twists we did tonight and our forward folds. Really allowing the chin to draw towards the chest, opening up the back of the neck, even opening up the chest with the shoulders drawing towards the mat. Strong fingers, strong toes. Nice flex happening. And when you're ready to come down from your wheel or your bridge, we're gonna meet back. Drawing the knees up to the chest, taking some rocks and rolls. Maybe grabbing the outer edges of the feet from the inside of the legs. Nice little Baddha Konasana in a recline position. So maybe allowing the soles of the feet to touch, wrapping the hands around the toes or the outer edges of the feet, and just drawing them in towards the belly, allowing the knees to splay open, allowing the shoulders to open and spread. Be careful not to jut out that chin. We wanna draw it back down towards the earth. Nice connectivity happening with the spine. And if happy baby calls to you, any last movements in these last moments before we settle into Shavasana, I recommend a nice overhead pointed toe stretch for the inhale and a nice exhale, yawn as we let the arms come down to the sides just spread out a little bit, maybe even cupping those hands again up towards the sky so that the backs of the hands are resting on the floor. Again, spreading out the heels, allowing the toes to splay. And just falling into your Shavasana. Maybe even 
practice tilting that pelvis up, connecting the lower back to the mat, and then releasing. Feeling any tension, leaving the body, maybe starting at the belly, starting at this central nervous system area, just feeling that relaxation. Expand out through the body, from the belly button to the low rib cage, from the belly button to the hip bones, from the lower rib cage to the heart area, from the hip bones to the tops of the thighs. Just slowly radiating up through the body, down through the body, radiating extending down the arms to the fingertips and remembering that radiating energy around the sides of the body, back body, top of the head, forehead, the back of the skull, all drawing down, melting now into your mat, feeling your earlobes draw down, cheekbones, sinuses, just all relaxing. Feeling the lips, chin, all drawing back and down towards the jawline, jawline towards the neck and the neck towards the mat. Allowing the shoulders to settle in one last breath or two before we drift off. Enjoying these last minutes of our Shavasana. Slowly coming back to the body, maybe pointing the toes towards the bottom of the mat, raising the arms above the head. Nice inhale, body stretch, opening up that belly one last time. Wiggling out the wrists, ankles, before we slowly start to roll over to one side or the other. Maybe bringing the knees up for a little breath in fetal position, perhaps cradling the head with the arm. Taking these last moments of introspection before we press into the floor with the top arm, allowing ourselves to rise head last maybe coming into Sukhasana or cross-legged easy pose, keeping our eyes closed. A couple of breaths, maybe keeping those palms up towards the sky to continue to receive grace from the universe. As we slowly start to flutter our eyes open, forming a mudra for the solar plexus, for the Manipura chakra. That mudra is similar to putting our hands into prayer, except we're gonna point our fingers outward in front of us. We're gonna bring the heels of the palms to our chakra area just above the belly button. Taking the left thumb, crossing it over the right hand and the right thumb over the left thumb. Maybe just opening up those palms slightly to allow some energy in on the inhale. And take a nice inhale and exhale before we set up for our Ram Mudra. So that's Ram with an R and the A is very long and the R is a rolling R. So it'll sound something like Ram. We're gonna set up for our inhale. Nice exhale. Nice inhale again.
Inhale. Ram. One more time. Ram. Taking right hand over heart, left hand over right, bowing our chin in gratitude for coming to our practice. Paying homage to our solar plexus, our Manipura chakra, the jewel of our chakra system. Thanking each other for joining in community, whether live here or virtually and recording later. Bringing hands together in prayer, taking the knuckles to third eye. I bow in gratitude towards you and wish you namaste until we meet again next week. Take care. Darling, darling, you're beautiful. Gotta keep your head up. Never let anything bring you down. Sunshine will always come around. Stay strong, move on, you have such a beautiful soul, let your energy radiate.